we previously looked at the peak detector or the uh, peak rectifier, which had a diode and a capacitor in series with each other. And we saw that during the first part of the cycle, the capacitor charged up to the peak. And then as the source dropped on down and the voltage on this side of the diode went less than this side of the diode, there was no opportunity or the diode kept the capacitor from discharging. And the peak was, or the voltage across the capacitor was constant. We're now going to look at a little bit more realistic situation where we have that same diode capacitor, but now connected to a load, or we're representing a load with this resistor. Now there's a path for the capacitor to discharge. And rather than the voltage across the capacitor remaining constant, it drops off at some expon or drops off exponentially, dependent upon the time constant of the single time constant circuit. So we're going to our analysis here is going to assume that we've designed this such that R times C, the time constant, is much greater than the period of the source. That means then that there will not be a whole lot of drop. There won't be a lot of time for the capacitor to drop relative to the time constant, but there will be some drop off. Thus the capacitor discharges through the resistor until the time that the source has gone through its negative cycle and is coming back up and the source voltage matches the discharging capacitor voltage. During that last little part of the cycle, the capacitor recharges. This results then in a slight ripple on the voltage across the capacitor. It's sagging down, it charges up when the source gets to the point of, char of equaling the sag sagging voltage. The source then goes back on down, the capacitor discharges until once again it recharges from the source. So the waveform of the capacitor voltage has this slight sag and an overall ripple that we're going to call V sub R. V sub R then is the amount of voltage drop on the capacitor until, or that happens before, the capacitor is once again recharged each cycle. Consistent with a single time constant circuit, during this discharge time, the voltage across the capacitor, V out, is going to equal V sub P E to the minus T over RC. Now, as we've mentioned, RC, the time constant, is much greater than T, so the charge time delta T is very small. And we can approximate the voltage at the end of the discharge to be V sub P E to the minus cap T over RC. What this approximation is saying is that this voltage on the capacitor, we can think of it as though it had discharged for the entire period because, first of all, it's discharging very slowly and there's only a very small amount of the time that the capacitor is charging. So we're saying then that at the end of the discharge, the voltage is going to, on the capacitor will be V sub P e to the minus cap T over RC. And that then will equal the peak voltage minus our ripple voltage. Once again, since RC is much greater than T, the exponent T over RC is going to be very small. And we can approximate this exponential, this exponential term with the first two terms of its Taylor series expansion, which would be 1 minus T over R times C. And we get then V sub P minus V sub R, that's an R, is equal to V sub P times 1 minus T over R times C. We can take this expression and solve for V sub R, and we get then that V sub R is, and this should have been an approximately equal to because we're using the Taylor series approximation. We get then that V sub R is approximately equal to V sub P, the peak voltage, times T over RC. Now T is the period of the source, so 1 over T is the frequency, and we can rewrite this then as this, in fact, let's write it over here. The ripple voltage then is approximately equal to V sub P times 1 over F times R times C. What we see here then is that the size of this ripple voltage can be reduced. The amount of ripple we have on this can be reduced by either increasing the frequency 
so that there's not so much time for it to discharge, increasing the resistor or increasing the capacitor so that the time constant of the circuit is longer. Finally, we can deduce the amount of time that the capacitor is charging during each cycle. As we've pointed out, charging begins when the dropping down or the discharging voltage on the capacitor equals the rising voltage on the source. Or we can say then that this voltage here, which is V sub P minus V sub R, will be equal to the voltage rising on the capacitor, or the voltage on the source. Now, that is going to be approximately equal to V sub P cosine of omega delta T. What we're saying here is that this voltage on the capacitor, or not on the capacitor, the source voltage at the time the two intersect will just be the, the uh, value of this expression at T equals delta T. And of course it continues for delta T seconds. Now assuming that omega delta T is small, we can now use the Taylor series expansion for the cosine of omega delta T, which is equal to 1 minus 1 half omega delta T quantity squared. And we have then V sub P minus V sub R is approximately equal to V sub P times this Taylor series expansion, which is 1 minus 1 half of omega delta T quantity squared. Solving this for omega delta T, we get then omega times delta T is equal to, approximately equal to, the square root of 2 times V sub R divided by V sub P. Thus, in this, we've determined an expression for, at least an approximate expression, for the length of time that the capacitor will be charging. We've determined a, or developed an expression for the amount of ripple voltage that we would experience in this circuit.